We continue live right here on Pittsburgh CW. Bob Pompiani and Paul Zeiss with you on the Sports Call. Bordis and Bordis Hotline. Give it a shout. One other thing I want to get into in the baseball playoffs last night. We saw a controversial play in the very first inning of a game that really, uh, I thought Boston was a little lucky to win. And when they did, they were up 3-1. They're playing a game tonight, which amounts to an elimination game for Houston. But, Paul, I want to get your thoughts on Jose Altuve with a drive to right. Mookie Betts looked to me like Joe West jumped on that call. And, I, you know, listen, you got to make a call one way or the other. He chose to call fan interference. And I suppose from where he was, maybe it looked like that. Replay didn't do it enough justice here. I thought if you're going to have replay, it's to overturn a bad call from an umpire. They say they didn't have 100% conclusive evidence. To me, it was 100%. I thought it was real easy to see that his glove was in the, in, was in the stands. Um, and the other part of it is, why is Joe West working a game this big? I mean, he's the worst umpire in baseball. He's a guy that no, and nobody in baseball seems to like the guy or respect him or think he knows what he's doing. And, you know, he's, what do they call him, Cowboy Joe or something like that because he, you know, takes over games and wants to be the story. It's bad if you're an umpire and people talk about you a lot. And they talk, you know, he's one of the guys they always talk about because he makes bad calls. I thought this was a horrendous way, you know, for a game. And the ALCS are rolling. I thought it was terrible. Yeah, but I thought replay didn't do what it was supposed to do. It was conclusive it to me. And I tell you, the other thing, you know, the other thing, Bob, if you look at the still photo, you can see the shadow of the guy's arm right. reaching out. The, 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 who is it? Betts? Mookie Betts. It's bets, clear right. his glove is in the stands. If you look, just all you got to do is look at the shadow of his arm. This is not a Barton situation. This is... If, if a fan reaches into the playing field, that's right. one thing. They did not do that. That ball went into the stance. He went after it. It's fair game. Fans can grab his glove if they want. Uh, nothing should have happened. Line two, we go. It's Marilyn in Monhall. Hey, Marilyn, welcome to the Sports Call. How are you? Hi, gentlemen. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. I'm wondering why when a shot is um, hit and hits a post, why it's not considered a shot on goal. Because um, it didn't go on goal. It didn't go in. Yeah. A shot on goal is supposed to be a shot that would end up in the goal. And if it's not, if it didn't go in the goal, then it's not a shot on goal. It's a, it's a post. They don't keep a separate category for that. But um, hope that answers your question. Thanks. Let's go out to line one. That's Ben and Butler. Hey, Ben, how are you? Hey, um, two things. Um, why can't they trade Le'Veon Bell for a second-round quarterback? And another thing is, um, um. Can, can James Conner play seven more years? <laughs> Paul, Paul. <laughs> you take For a second-round <laughs> cornerback, I think. Well, well the point is, you, you, don't, you said quarter or corner, doesn't matter. If you get a second-round pick, that would be one thing. Yes. And if they got one, I would take one to answer your question. Um, just because I think the, the best they're going to do at this point is a third-round pick. Right. And you know, if they got a third-round pick, I would say trade them, too. I mean, you're going to. You would do that even if James Conner got injured and you knew he was a good insurance well, I mean, policy I to have. I don't know if he's. I mean, I'm, we're, the trade deadline's like next week. Coming, coming up. Right. If so he's still healthy within the next. If James Conner is still healthy after the Browns game, yes, I would trade Levy. Well, how about if he gets injured the very next week? Then what? Well, then, you know, I guess you rolled the dice and lost. Well, I wouldn't roll but the dice. But you can't. You don't know that. I would keep Bell here. I'd make him play if he comes in, and that's the end of it. And he would not play ahead of Conner, but he would play. That's the way I would do it. I would trade him for a third round. If, if someone offered it, me a third round pick, I would take it. I'd want more. If, and I think hopefully, if you're the Steelers, you're hoping that somebody gets desperate enough to want him at a second round pick and wants to deal with him longer term. That's the key. If someone would like to do that, okay, fine. You can come up to some sort of deal in advance and make that happen. We'll see. Let's go out to Tom in Swissvale. Tom, welcome to the program. Go ahead. Tom. Yeah. Go ahead. You're on the air. Okay. This is Tom Perry. I want the Steelers to win, and if they don't win, I'm going to take away your third down. I have no idea there what you <laughs> said, so we'll go out to Pete in Squirrel Hill. Hey, Pete, how you doing? Hey, Bob, how are you tonight? <laughs> okay, Hey, man. Bob, about Joe West, I was under the impression that Major League Baseball umpires worked under a grading system. They do. When you, when you grade out the highest, then you're granted a license to work the playoffs in the World Series. If Joe West is so universally regarded as being horrible, how does he get the gig in the playoffs? That's what Paul was bringing up. I have no idea answer to That's you. That's exactly, I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, the one thing I will say is they don't they use, uh, don't they use rotating crews? Mm -hmm. So if you work the ALDS, you don't work the ALCS, but you could work the World Series. 
So I guess maybe the, they just don't have enough good umpires yeah, based I mean, on their I mean, radius. again, he's a veteran guy. I'm sure there's some, you know, because he's a veteran, he has a little bit more leeway in terms of how they grade him. Yeah. I mean, who knows? There's no reason he should be on on the game. That's for sure. Let's go to Altoona, Pennsylvania. Clint is on the line. Hey, Clint, what's up? Uh, not much. I just want to make ask you guys a question about the Steelers. But first, I think I got to disagree with you guys and Paul, especially. I think Angel Hernandez is the worst umpire in the league. I mean, <laughs> they had him banned, I think, a year from doing the playoffs. He was so bad. But uh, well, that's because I'm rooting for Boston. I need Boston to win it all. But um, the game here uh, coming up, <clears throat> that we were talking about here at some of the local sports uh, radio shows. Do you think this Baltimore game coming up here in a couple of weeks might be the biggest game for the year for the Steelers? Could be, sure. Baltimore's playing well. Uh, and that rivalry always carries extra meaning. So depending on how – but there's so many games left, it's hard for me to, to look at that specific game because of what lies ahead. They're not going to play anymore after that point. And maybe that is too early to play two games against the Ravens, Paul. I don't know. I, I kind of like having a lot of division games later in the year. Yeah, I mean, I think the big thing with the Ravens is if you if you lose it, you've you've been swept by them. So which is very you know, hurtful. You've got no, you now your tiebreak. Well, of course you've got a tie anyway, so there might not be a tie. But you lose a tiebreaker. But the other part of it is, um, you you know, it's another AFC loss. I mean, I think it's a huge game. If if they lose it, I think they're going to have a hard hard time winning the division. I agree with that, and ultimately those games come right down to the very end, and who knows, we may have the Ravens with a tie, because so far, this is the first year in NFL history that there's been an overtime game in all six weeks, at least one, sometimes, have had, you know, there have been two or three, I've yeah. never seen so many yeah. overtime games. And uh, there's what, three ties, or two two or three ties, yeah. and the other day, the kid kicked a field goal, was it the Dolphins? Right. He kicked a field goal, if time not, that expired, been a tie. if he missed that, there would have been another tie. And he had missed one earlier, so you there know, was a good chance he would have, but he made it. You know, here's my question, what, the, the whole 10 minute overtime is stupid. Why not should it least, be 15? Should, keep it at least. They, they said in the name 15. of safety. I mean, five yeah, minutes? there was that. Five but minutes? I think it, you know, the other part of it is, they, they, they want to, don't, the early games, they don't want them running well, so start far, them early. But, you know start I mean? them earlier or start right. the other ones a little bit later. Who yeah. cares? But they don't want them running into the 4 o'clock window is what it really right. comes down to. we got to take a break. We have Rod and Don coming up next right here live on Pittsburgh CW.